blindly following the leader, it doesn't fulfill in the same way. You, you need to become autonomous. Otherwise, you're going to hit a ceiling very quickly. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Strength Connection podcast. Today, it's you and me on this very special solo episode. I'm your host, Michael Krakowski. Appreciate you joining me. So it's been an interesting week, a lot of fun conversations that I've had. I'm excited to share some of these insights with you. So as this is uh, getting released now, if you're getting to this right away, I hopefully should be in Texas. I am away uh, this weekend in February for a mastermind summit. Been excited to connect with some epic souls, uh, some people I haven't uh, met in person. We've connected quite a bit over the onlines, all that good stuff, but some other people who are very, very close friends that I have not seen in a while. Really excited to just uh, you know break bread, share strength stories, all that good stuff. So I'm sure there's going to be some really interesting insights and takeaways from this weekend that I'm sure I'll be sharing on the podcast soon. But wherever you are in the world, hopefully you're having a great week. And uh, yeah, so we'll dive in. So uh, what I'm going to do on this episode here is uh, first off, actually, I want to um, just give a gift out. If you haven't received this yet and you want uh, a free gift, I would love to give this to you. So a short while ago, I created a a uh, new playbook called the Go To Kettlebell Playbook. This was created with eight different workouts that I put together that personally speak to me in times of either mentally drained or really crunched for time or really practicing and working on intuition and self awareness. These are workouts and training sessions that have spoken to me, really feel like I get to engage in these things or in those matters when. I need to go off script just because of time commitments, or it's just one of those, I need a, a mental release space day. I put these together. I did this after one of my workshops that I did chaotic strength, and it's received great feedback from people who have read it, who have adopted these workouts into their training plans, as well as creating their own go-tos. Um, that's the point of this playbook is not just to take the workouts and follow them, but actually to help you create your own go-to plans when you are crunched for time or you are maybe mentally drained, how to create the best training sessions personally for you that uh, are going to speak to you the most. So if you'd like a free copy of this go-to uh, kettlebell playbook, you can just email me, go to mike at breakthroughsecrets.net and just ask for a free copy and I'll send it right over to you. So that's my gift to you. It's been a really great resource for a lot of people from the messages that I've got. And if I can spread a little bit more strength out for you, then that's my hopeful mission to do so. So again, just email me, mike at breakthroughsecrets.net, and I will send that right over to you. So, all right, going into this week. So what I wanted to do for this episode is I had two conversations that I want to break down on the podcast. One is released right now that you can go and listen to, and another one I did this week that's going to be uh, released next week on here. So I got some really good uh, takeaways, insights, made me really think and ponder a lot on these. So I wanted to just take both of these and break these down for today um, and complete the episode there. So the first one is with uh, Ray Gorman. Ray is a physical therapist and strength coach who created the program Engage Movement. And this episode is out now. So I came to know of Ray from a mutual friend, Eric Malzone, who's been on the podcast. He's worked with Ray in the past, uh, said that I think you two would really uh, hit it off. Ray's doing some really interesting stuff with combining or more so bridging the gap between clinical work with physical therapy and health and fitness with strength coaching and really merging those two together into his uh, program retention model. So we chatted for a bit on the phone, just kind of dove into each other's origin stories. And then I thought this was going to be a perfect fit. So we jumped on the podcast and had a great conversation. So to break it down, Ray was, you know, wanted to get into physical therapy, went into practice, was in the insurance based world of physical therapy, really saw a lot of holes and uh, flaws in how to give the best results to clients in that specific modality. So he went into more of like a cash-based business where he was doing physical therapy without prescription or insurance-based coverage. So he could work more individually with people, very similar to, you know, a lot of personal training. And this spoke to me because I worked with this for a long time. When I was a manager of a club, we had a, 
uh, connection with an orthopedic group and a physical therapist group. And we had a really strong referral system with them of essentially the orthos that I work with, you know, the people that didn't need surgery, they had more movement compensation, they need to get fitter. That's when they referred them over to us. And then people who were coming off of uh, their physical therapy rehab and needed to get reintroduced back into mainstream fitness, we had a program that we developed there. It worked really well. Where it seemed to start to butt heads is when we got in with physical therapy because, you know, I just thought it was... I didn't know that business. I don't know that world that much coming from uh, more of a private sector of health and fitness and realized once I got into it and talking with the managers and the, and the PTs there, how shackled they were so much from insurance on that. Uh, really tough. It was, I kind of really felt, felt for them in a way, because I just came from a world where people are paying cash out of pocket. So you have a lot more open uh, options to work with that person on versus insurance where you're so pigeonholed into what is the insurance paying for. So Ray saw that as well. And then he uh, continuously built his program up. So now he, with Engage Movement, he works with a program of both in-person and virtual online coaching for people from physical therapy. I thought it was cool because I never heard this from a physical therapy background as much. But as we got into the why behind it, why he felt like he could create this is he wanted to help cultivate a autonomous journey for people that he was working with, where he maybe needed to see some people in person to start with to get them on the right track. But eventually he realized a lot of the stuff that the people needed to do, they could do on their own. They just needed some accountability check-ins afterwards, which is very similar to what I do with my online coaching program. Similar, if you're a coach listening to this doing online, you probably do something in the same uh, manner. But I really like just how he didn't want to do this handholding or shackling clients to think that they need him every step of the way. I saw this so much for a long period of time where people believe and they they build this routine up thinking that they have to be in front of their coach, they have to be in front of their therapist or have to be in front of somebody leading the charge of their program. Otherwise, they couldn't do what they needed to do. I saw this a lot with COVID, COVID after we closed down our studio and realized that so many people were falling off, even though we were giving them the same kind of workout plans and the routines, they were falling off because we without thinking of it, maybe subconsciously, but we were enabling people as much as we were helping them because they were so attuned to always coming in and seeing us. And we were leading the way we were telling them exactly what to do, not creating a, uh, an ability for them to think on their own, where if times do come up where they don't have somebody right in front of them, they can still get everything that they need for their strength training, for their journey, for their rehab, whatever it is. And I think that's just something that we all want. You know, we want guidance. We want someone to help us navigate the path. But essentially, we are behind the own wheel of our car. Like, we need to drive it. And I think it's very easy for coaches to get in that zone of thinking that, oh, my clients need to be in front of me every second so I can control everything that they're doing. And on the other end, the client thinks that I need to be in front of this person because I don't know what, to, I, I can't motivate myself. I need to, they motivate me. They tell me what to do and I don't need to think about it. It's a very easy relationship to get into and everything goes well if that relationship stays intact. But if something pops up where you can't necessarily, you know, get together on that, then the whole, you know, all the wheels fall apart. That shouldn't be the case. So it made me think of a book that I've recommended numerous times on the podcast before I've talked about it a bit, but I wanted to bring it up again. And that is the book Mastery by Robert Greene. Um, Robert Greene, I think he got his most famous book is the 48 Laws of Power that went out, but I read Mastery a long time ago. I plan on rereading it again this year. The way that he broke that down of mastering anything was in the three different phases. You have your apprenticeship phase, the creative active phase, and then mastery. And where most of us go in is that apprenticeship phase where you are learning from the master, you're learning from the teacher, you know, you're engaging, you're getting a lot of information, you're starting to walk the path of it. And that's good. We see so many results from that. But eventually it gets to a point where just blindly following the leader, it doesn't fulfill in the same way. You've kind of graduated out of that level. You need to get into that next phase, which is the creative active. 
So the best example I remember Robert Greene gave in his book that's so in my head was from Mozart, where he spent like 10 years under the tutelage of this one person. Then eventually he went to Vienna and I'm paraphrasing, I don't know the exact time frame, but most of the music that we know of from Mozart, if you hear like the famous works, he created all of that within like a span of months, like a short period of time. Like he wrote one of the most famous things that we know in his music, like in one evening, because he needed to change the ending of it. He went into that creative active phase. He learned everything that he could from the, the teacher, but eventually he needed to go on his own path and create his own way. He took all the knowledge that he had and then spun it into his own individual plan. It was such a beautiful example of mastery and you can do that in anything. And I think specifically with sustaining health and fitness and strength goals that we have, this is a key step that as coaches, we need to teach. And as clients, we need to understand that we're eventually going to get to this point where you need to become autonomous. Otherwise, you're going to hit a ceiling very quickly. Ray was one of those guys that he just, this he reinvigorated this insight in me from this book. And I think he's doing such an amazing job with his program in physical therapy. So again, you can go and re-listen to that episode uh, right now. It's live. You can jump on uh, wherever you're listening to this podcast or jump on YouTube and uh, go check that out. All right, so shifting gears, the other one that I did was gonna be out next week. This was with a gentleman named Blake Castle. Um, if you don't know Blake, he is the CEO and founder of Body Elastics, which is a company that creates resistance band training. And it's the only stackable resistance band program in the world. What I mean by that is it's not just one individual band that you have, you can clip numerous ones on to increase resistance. So for me, kind of just in an ignorant phase, I've done resistance band training, but I always used it more as a, a warm up tool, a um, uh, active recovery type tool and auxiliary based uh, training, never a standalone based program. And that's what Blake's done is he created this resistance band. If you've been to gyms before, it's probably a good chance that you've there's body elastics bands in there. It is the uh, most top quality product that you can have on the resistance band front. And he went into the evolution of creating this. So Blake started this in 1994 when him and a friend wanted to figure out how to create a really strong home gym training program. And then in 98, they launched the first product out, which was the first body elastics band. And then essentially, I believe in like 2007, 2008, they launched an online based training program. They were doing live based workouts. Now, it's so interesting because we think of it now in 2023, there's a million different online based programs that you can do, not just for health and fitness, but education for telemedicine. I mean, there's so many things online is such a part of us. But if you think back to 15, 20 years ago, this was all a very early adopter Based thought. Like there was not a lot of online programs. Blake was one of the first uh, adopters into the online based world, not just doing like a video like on TV, but actually an interactive online program that you can follow and progress with. So the lesson I got from Blake of hearing his story about it, um, it's, I mean, the product is great. Like he's done a phenomenal job of, of evolving the product over time. But the biggest lesson that I got was how he created this, where he had a vision of what he wanted to do. And so many obstacles and things popped up from the design of it from, okay, now we need to figure out how to latch this onto a door. If somebody's at home, how are they going to actually assemble it and correct it? First, they had it in like a door frame, but then they realized if somebody opens the door wrong, it could snap back like a slingshot. How do we fix that? Oh, the handle depreciates really quickly from some of the early ones. How do we uh, adjust that? Oh, that with the handle, uh, with one of them, like the nylon was just creating so much friction that it wasn't impeding the workout, but it felt really off. How do we change that? How do we make it more ergonomic, more comfortable with it? So all these things kept coming up and it was such a cool story to hear of Blake. There's so many different changes that he made over time to the design, to the program, but it was all based on the vision. He had a vision of creating a really top quality product, as well as an online based program that people can do from home. 
Now, whatever modality that you do from training, you take that aside. It's just he had a vision of doing that and giving an opportunity for people to not have a kind of plan B thing at home. If they couldn't make it to the gym, they could still do something. No, have actually like a really like grade A top quality program that they can do completely from their home with a very minimal amount of equipment. Um, you know, talks about putting all the bands in a bag and, you know, traveling all over the world with it because it's super light. Like he had all these things that he had a vision to do. And when you have a vision of it, like it didn't doesn't matter the process, like the process comes, you keep the vision strong and you figure out the best way to do it. And then consistently kept evolving it over and over again. He kept reinventing the product and upgrading the design and the system until He's like, okay, this works really good. And then he kept thinking of it over and over again. Can we make this better? Can we make this more efficient? Can we make this stronger? It's a beautiful mindset to be in. And that was really the lesson that I got from talking with Blake. It wasn't so much about the resistance band and the quality of it. And when he went into all of that on the episode, so you can, you can dive into that, but more so of having a vision and staying on top of that. That was the coolest thing that I got from it. And yeah, that was the lesson that I wanted to share uh, from that. And yeah, I'll leave it at that from there. So Blake's episode, that's going to be out next week after this is released. So, um, you know, make sure you tune in and dive on that. Got a few really interesting conversations that are coming up uh, soon on the podcast, which I'll be sharing and recapping more with you. Um, and then, yeah, I'm really excited to to go on this trip to get away first, get away from the New York winter uh, here that we're diving into right now, get into a little bit of warm weather. But uh, I know it's going to be a lot of insights, a lot of, you know, depth in different areas of strength that I'm excited to share with you. So uh, on that note, I'll leave it there. So uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so wherever you're listening to the podcast and do me a favor if you could, cause we're trying to build this as well. If you haven't gone to YouTube and checked us out, please subscribe to the YouTube channel and click notifications to help the algorithm help us grow this show, uh, more and more on YouTube and the visuals. So I'd really appreciate it. Awesome guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Appreciate you so much. Talk to y'all soon. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you found some great value here. And if you like this episode, please drop a comment and leave us a five-star rating and review. It does more to build the show than you can imagine. And do not forget to check out and join the Strength Connection Facebook group. In this group, I share the biggest takeaways and lessons from these amazing conversations, as well as training and strength tips for pursuing mastery and fulfillment in life. It's, this group is filled with individuals looking to take full control over their strength, and it's the perfect space to explore new ideas and to share your journey. And you'll also get exclusive access to the Strength Connection Mastery Seminars. It's a deep dive into the physical, mental, and spiritual training that you can begin using immediately. So do not wait. Go now. Seriously, go. I right, much love to you. Thank you so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.